Harvey Weinstein as a serial predator. This was a well-known secret in Hollywood. The New York Times reporting allegations by numerous women who say the Hollywood mogul sexually harassed them. We had one instance in a hotel room where he made a pass. I'd experienced this thing in isolation, and I didn't know how rampant it was. I thought it was just me. And like many victims, you blame yourself. I was depressed. I was paranoid. I lived in fear. I tried to get out. He invited her. I, I just said, please don't. Do not do that. Do not do that. Do not do that. Guilty of rape and criminal sexual assault. But tonight, Harvey Weinstein is a convicted sex offender. Hayek has now added her voice to the growing list of accusers who brought down Harvey Weinstein. She wrote, quote, for years, he was my monster. She describes having a nervous breakdown on the set and crying uncontrollably. She said his wrath rained down when she refused to let him massage her and that he even threatened to kill her. And I felt that I was a coward. This is a strange sensation. And this is maybe the wrong feeling to have, but I want to be honest. I see this woman coming with this kind of leopard bikini, and that was Salma Hayek. When I started out, they told me, go back to your country. They said, there are no parts for Latinas here. What do you want to play, the maid? You'll never get a leading role for a Latina. And this is what truly inspired me. Some people have the chemistry, and they don't get along. But on screen, it looks great. There are so many historical cases like is that. Is that our case? It's not our case, though. <laughs> The first time I read the review Salma Hayek bombshell, I started crying because I thought it meant bomb, that I bombed, that I was terrible in the movie and I was the bomb in the movie. And then I got a lot of these kind of remarks and then I felt like they couldn't see past that. And women are so much more than a symbol of sensuality. I was very, very driven. When everybody said, your crisis is never gonna happen. He signed me to do other movies with him, and I thought, oh my God, because I had really struggled and nobody believed in me. This guy saw my artistic value. told me, I'm going to kill you. I have a lot of personal pleasures that came with the film. Like? The satisfaction of not sitting and complaining about the things I don't get, but getting up and getting them done. Now to the latest on Harvey Weinstein. The New York Times reporting allegations by numerous women who say the Hollywood mogul sexually harassed them. His alleged victims over nearly three decades include stars like Ashley Judd. When it came out, I was ashamed that I didn't speak up. But when we come together and unite with each other, then it's not about pain. It's about evolution. It's about becoming part of something that moves powerfully and that can make the big change happen. In a powerful op-ed to the New York Times, she wrote, quote, for years, he was my monster. Hayek says Weinstein constantly degraded her. She describes having a nervous breakdown on the set, throwing up and crying uncontrollably, and that he even threatened to kill her.
60% of women around the world experience some form of physical or sexual abuse during their life. Stand up to end violence against women now. It is important to release the anger. I don't want us to go from victims to angry. I am a short Mexican Arab angry woman. But I know how to channel that angry and transform it so that it doesn't blur my sight and I can see it. We have to trust that if the little things you do every day are morally correct, then change can happen. developments tonight in the Harvey Weinstein scandal, a searing account from Oscar-winning actress Lupita Nyong'o. He only responded to two women. You and Lupita? Yeah, right. two women of color. When I was a teenager, I got teased and taunted about my night-shaded skin. My one prayer to God was that I would wake up lighter skinned. The morning would come and I would be so excited about seeing my new skin that I would refuse to look down at myself until I was in front of a mirror because I wanted to see my fair face first. And every day I experienced the same disappointment of being just as dark as I had been the day before. My self-hate grew worse. All the imaginative things, the TV, the magazines, books I was reading only had light skin, pale skin, and so it made me feel less worthy. And then, Alec Weck. She was dark as night. She was on all the runways. I couldn't believe that people were embracing a woman who looked so much like me as beautiful. When I saw Alec, I inadvertently saw a reflection of myself that I could not deny. I didn't have that growing up and I wanted to kind of use the pain that I felt for it to be my, my weapon. Lupita traveled alone to the US to become an actor hoping to inspire young girls, but she had very little support. Ray Fiennes and I had a conversation in which she asked me what I wanted to do, and I said very timidly that I wanted to be an actor, and he sighed, took in a deep breath and said, Lupita, if there's anything else you want to do in your, with your life, do that instead. Only act if you feel like you can't live without it. Chasing her acting dreams, Lupita made the mistake of trusting movie mogul Harvey Weinstein. Harvey invited her to his home to watch a screening with his family, but soon lured her into his bedroom. He asked me uh, for a massage. He wanted to take off his pants. I told him not to do that and informed him that it would make me extremely uncomfortable. All the while, I know your brain is going, how, how did this happen? How did it happen? Yeah. She feared her future could be in jeopardy. I'd experienced this thing in isolation and I didn't know how rampant it was. I thought it was just me. And like many victims, you blame yourself. Haunted by what happened. She was too scared to speak up. And I get this call from an unknown number, and uh, he says, this is Steve McQueen. I'd like to offer you the role of Patsy on 12 Years a Slave. From the minute Steve called me until the minute uh, I got on set, I was certain that he was going to call me and tell me he'd made a mistake. The doubt was always there. Then she got a life-changing letter from a little girl who reminded her of herself. Dear Lupita, it reads, I think you, you're really lucky to be this black, but yet this successful in Hollywood overnight. I was just about to buy Densha's White Nicious Cream to lighten my skin when you appeared on the world map and saved me. My heart bled a little when I read those words. Lupita felt ashamed for how long she had stayed silent. That whole thing, I had suppressed it, and it was just bubbling to the surface. I was so uncomfortable, and I had trouble sleeping the whole time I was doing 12 Years a Slave, but it occurred to me as I was weeping in the night that my discomfort was temporary and Patsy's wasn't. And it still makes me cry. Lupita now realized the impact she had on others, and she knew what she had to do next. I realized the shame is not mine to hold. You know, the guilt isn't mine to hold. And so I wanted to speak up about it, to free myself of the guilt. Harvey Weinstein is speaking out, addressing Selma Hayek and Lupita Nyong'o's accusations. In a statement, Weinstein, via his reps, denies, quote, all of the sexual allegations as portrayed by Selma and Lupita. He has not responded to accusations from Gwyneth Paltrow, Angelina Jolie, or Cara Delevingne. We are the easiest to get discredited. Well, the good news is that there are so many, because if they hadn't been so many, if he could discredit us, he could then maybe discredit the rest. I am 
benefiting from the efforts of a lot of yeah. other women who have come before me who have had it a lot rougher than I have. Mm -hmm. More than 80 women have accused Weinstein of sexual misconduct. His trial seen as a watershed moment for the Me Too movement. Guilty of rape and criminal sexual assault, once one of the most powerful figures in Hollywood. Tonight, Weinstein is now behind bars. Lupita discovered her true beauty. You can't rely on how you look to sustain you. What is fundamentally beautiful is compassion. I had a woman come up to me in the store and she said, Thank you for teaching me how to love my daughter. Through the experience of seeing me in magazines and talking about these issues, she learned that she was loving her daughter out of fear rather than like um, teaching her to, to, to love herself the way she was. So tell us about your children's book. You know, it's a mirror for dark-skinned girls to see themselves. <clears throat> and so this children's book, Sulwe, is a book that is hopefully a nugget of self-worth. And now she inspires people across the world to realize their own beauty too you can affect and inspire other people without knowing it. You have a responsibility to humanity to play your bit, to find out what brings you joy, what gives you a sense of purpose and pursue that, because in pursuing that, you will be able to contribute to the change that will make the world a better place. We all see ourselves better when we can see ourselves in someone else. And to think that I'm that image for, uh, you know, kids coming up is such a blessing, it's such an honor. So, I hope that my presence on your screens and in magazines may lead you, young girl, on a similar journey. That you will feel the validation of your external beauty, but also get to the deeper business of being beautiful inside. There is no shade in that beauty. Jennifer told Variety it was such a level of gross entitlement and piggish behavior. Harvey cornered Jennifer and abused his power by pressuring her to wear a dress of his choosing. I was sad, I was mortified, I, I, I was trying to play catch up. What would people be most surprised to know about you, do you think? I don't sleep. That's right. Why? I don't know. Jennifer Aniston's perfect life came crashing down in 2005. Were you lonely? Yeah. Not as sad lonely, but just like... You look as if it hurts. I do? Yeah, you do. I'm absolutely uncomfortable. You couldn't be sweeter and kinder, and I'm just miserable right now. I don't know. Three months after separating from Brad, Jennifer was heartbroken once again. It was a tremendous shock to her when the pictures of, of Brad and Angelina frolicking on the beach came out. It sort of presented them as this instant family with a baby, and Jen had expected to be having her own baby with Brad during this year. You did say what Angelina did was very uncool. You did say that. He asked me a question, and I basically just answered it honestly as I could. Shattered by her breakup, Jennifer had no one to turn to, not even her own mother. My mom and I always had sort of a push and pull kind of a relationship. Jennifer's mother, a former model, constantly criticized and yelled at her daughter. I was a chubbier kid. That's probably why I wore so much makeup. I mean, my mom, like, was, you know, wore makeup. After her mother published a tell-all book behind her back, Jennifer vowed to never speak to her again. Oh my God, where did you get that? I got that out of the book she wrote. Oh, Jesus, I've never looked at it. Wow. I never saw this. I'm <laughs> sorry. See, isn't she gorgeous? <laughs> but are you surprised at yourself? that you can't let it go, transform it, redeem it. I've, I've definitely tried. It's that stubborn thing of, well, I tried enough. Now it's your turn. Now we're sort of all standing in our corners just waiting for the other to approach, probably. What's the sentence you most like to hear her say? Oh, I'm sorry. I get it. <laughs> you know, listening to you talking, Everything you've said so far makes me think that forgiving your mom, you're just about there. But Jennifer wasn't ready to forgive. Instead, she escaped into her work, filming a movie for a big Hollywood executive. Harvey Weinstein as a serial predator. This was a well-known secret in Hollywood. Years before, Brad Pitt's ex-girlfriend, Gwyneth Paltrow, fell victim to Harvey. And I was very shaken by the whole thing. We had one instance in a hotel room where he made a pass at me. 
I really kind of stood up to him. I told my boyfriend at the time, Brad Pitt, he said, if you ever make her feel uncomfortable again, I'll kill you. It was like the equivalent of throwing him against the wall. It was so fantastic. And Harvey was never inappropriate with me again. Without Brad there to save her, who would protect Jennifer from Harvey? Harvey's attempt to control Jennifer was all too familiar. But just months after being publicly humiliated and abandoned, Jennifer was finally pushed to the edge. Whenever you feel a little nervous about something, you have to sort of go walk towards it. So I did. Jennifer stood her ground, and this infuriated Harvey. Weinstein had received an email notifying him about Jennifer Aniston confiding to a friend about being attacked. There were also some other details in the email that included Harvey having a massive crush on her. The ruthless Hollywood producer wanted his revenge. Did Harvey Weinstein want Jennifer Aniston dead? Jen Aniston should be killed is the shocking email Weinstein allegedly sent. Crossing Harvey was dangerous, but rising above him made Jennifer see her mother in a new light. This is painful and this is not going away, you know? And so it, there was something about having to overcome that heartbreak, especially when you love your parents so much. After surviving the most horrifying year of her life, Jennifer was finally ready to face her mother. After nine years of estrangement from her mother, they've begun talking again by phone. It's been really nice. It's crazy what, you know, your life kind of being turned upside down will lead you to. It's always, it's always some really wonderful things that end up coming out of it. I think for us, it was the time. Yeah. healing, mending. Mm -hmm. The other day, uh, I was doing yoga, and I said, you know what, I have to say, I'm feeling a feeling I have, I don't know if I've ever actually felt before, and that is that I don't want to be anywhere other than where I am right now. It was a feeling of total peace. And by recognizing how far she'd come, Jennifer was finally able to make peace with Brad. People want it to be this war and this this mean, terrible, shallow thing, and it's just not. No anger, no feeling of wasted years. No. None of it. Thank God, no. Wouldn't that be a drag? Hi, Aniston. How you doing? Good, honey. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm all right. After standing up to Harvey, Jennifer opened her own production company to fix the system he had abused for so long. We are surrounded by people who found their voice and are using it. That to me is true power. Jennifer's year from hell showed her that true power is choosing to take back control of your life. Injury, depression, pain, people become comfortable with it and it becomes their part of their identity. You know, we all have varying degrees of loss and sadness and pain in our lives, but it's a, it's, your, it's a personal choice to, to get up and move on, be better. Sia's voice always had the power to move people. I grew up around wacky artists and I knew from very early on that there was something special about me. But the one person who resented her talent was her own father, who was a failed rock star. He had two very unique personalities. Phil was like the best dad ever. Like right. he was so nice. So when Stan came around, stuff got scary. It's impossible not to see something you wanted happen to someone else and wish it for yourself. Maybe it's envy. When she tried to support her dad's dream, he cruelly rejected her. And I was like, well, dad, if you want me to sing harmonies or anything on it, just let me know. And he turned around, he looked at me and he said, nah. It's my album, and you're not on it. I overcompensated by devaluing myself, uh, putting myself down. In search of the stability she never got from her dad, Sia tried to build a better life by moving to London with her boyfriend, Dan. Just 34 and I'm living the dream of a 10-year-old. I was constantly looking for something just to feel like some sense of equilibrium. But one phone call brought her hopes crashing down. Dan was killed in a car accident on his 24th birthday. I was so depressed, I wanted to die. Alone again in London, Sia couldn't handle the grief and started to destroy herself. I got drunk a lot and like sometimes I did drugs and that was a way of deflecting the grief. She managed to channel some of her pain into beautiful songs that touched people's hearts. But as her popularity grew, her old fear came rushing back. Touring can be really lonely. It seems to cause me a lot of anxiety. What did I want this? Like what the f was I thinking? I was a terrible alcoholic and I had started popping pills as well. 
her depression had a more life-threatening cause, too. I was sick, and I, I didn't know I was sick with a thyroid condition. I had to stop. I hit a bottom, and I thought, I can't do it this way anymore. And I had been sort of trying to avoid my feelings through drink and drugs. Sia had to get sober to survive, but would singing make her relapse? Like, I did not care about anything else. I just wanted to survive. How can I exploit my gift without having to hurt myself? And I sobered up and decided I didn't want to be an artist anymore. And yes. it was destabilizing. Sia hid herself by writing songs for other famous singers, like Katy Perry. Some people crave it. Some people have really good boundaries set in place, and other people get a taste of it like me and just want to get the f*** out. Katie was in awe of Sia's talent and pushed her to sing her own songs proudly. Oh my god, this song is so good. You're crazy. I don't need to be on this record. Keep Sia on the record. But Sia was too afraid to risk her stability by showing her face to the world. The singer makes some awfully unconventional choices. The jagged hair, the eccentric outfits, and oh yeah, she doesn't want to show her face. I don't want to be famous or recognizable. I don't want to be critiqued about the way that I look. Till she saw a young dancer on the reality hit TV show, Dance Moms, it was like looking at her younger self. That show was already sort of abominable. They're all being abused by uh, that dance teacher emotionally and verbally. And I could see she was already suffering from PTSD. She said to my mom, I want to get in contact with your daughter. I want her to be in my video. And at the time, I didn't really know who Sia was because I was so young and she didn't show her face. With Maddie dancing alongside her, Sia didn't feel so alone. The day we met, we clicked and we knew that it was a special connection. And I went and I watched her at rehearsal and I immediately started to cry. I just thought, I have to protect her. I didn't want to be famous and I threw this child into the spotlight. And she would say to me, don't be silly, I was already famous and I wanted to be famous. I knew she was going to be massively successful and that there would be so many opportunities for her to be taken advantage of. Sia decided the best way to keep Maddie safe was to keep her by her side. And when Maddie got an unexpected invitation, her motherly instinct kicked in for the first time made sure she never got on a jet to see Harvey Weinstein. He was once one of the most powerful movie producers in Hollywood. But tonight, Harvey Weinstein is a convicted sex offender. He invited her. I, I just said, please don't. Do not do that. Do not do that. Do not do that. I just love her as a mother. I love her as if she were mine. I would take a bullet for her. There's no agenda except for keep her safe psychologically and physically. With Maddie's support, Sia found the courage to go on tour again for the first time in five years. So you're on tour with her right now, or you uh, just finished? We, we finished a couple months ago. It was the best experience of my life. And one night with Katie, she was able to show the world her true self. Becoming a woman was learning about connection, learning how to trust other people, learning how to reach out and when I'm in discomfort, learning some compassion for myself. Looking after Maddie made Sia realize she could give other kids the stability that she'd always needed. And so she adopted two teenage boys. It's a blessing for me. I think they saved me, so I'm like in heaven. They both suffered a lot. I have the resources to get them the help that they needed for their early trauma. And today, she's closer to Maddie than ever. Would you describe your relationship as a mother or as a sister? Yeah, mother. Mother and friend. And I think that it was part of my own healing. She is the best person in my life. She's, I think, my godmom now. So if anything were to happen, she would take me, which is really cool. Sia broke free from fear to share her gifts with the world. This is what my face looks like. It's certainly uncomfortable to display that level of vulnerability. But once you've done it once, <laughs> it will never go. And once we share our authentic selves, we can help others do the same. But the real rose is learning to show up for people. Um, to realize is that I am not my past. I love you. If you're having a hard time, I've always loved you. I just didn't know I loved me too. It gets better. Just don't give up. When we're not together, I think of Drew, wish good things on my Drew. Yeah. He's the best partner a girl could ever ask for, seriously. Yeah. And um, Tell that to my wife.